Dear story manifestors, you normally expect uplifting writing advice and all things storytelling. But during the month of October, I have taken over control. And I will be using story... <laughs> Stop, Bob Pumpkin Parade. And I will be using story manifestors to punish two literary criminals by forcing them to teach you save the cat. Okay, so how is this device? Oh. Oh dear. I was really hoping we'd, you know, go somewhere charming. Maybe the twenties? They looked fun when they passed. Oh, did you see? They have tea. They have tea. They have tea. Ah, ah, look, I think this is helpful. Oh, hello. 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 Why don't you go ahead and sit down? I'll pour the tea. Oh, yes. Well, I think we need to sharpen things. <laughs> Oh yes, because I'll take care see, of there's a picture on the on the back, and there's I'll, one. I'll see what I can do. I've got more the two. I'll see what I can do. Oh, wonderful! The water still tastes the same. Yes. I would hope very so. dull. You know, we're not Sisyphus over here. <laughs> Fair, but that might get us out of purgatory. Oh yes, good. <laughs> Into hell. You're though. just showing them your butt. That's a rather nice one. Professor. Well, yes. Oh, have but a seat. Have a seat. Let me see what I can do over here. Okay. Well. So, and they're just... Let me see. Is that and we're back. We're back. Hello. Hello. And there we are. Oh, yes. And we're in focus. In... 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 Well, yeah, I you... you check I what I did. You, you see if this looks good or not. We, we do not teach classes very often, so I hope you're very much focused. Can you take a peek, see if yes, I am of course on I the uh, minute of Oh my goodness. Hello! Oh yes, yes, you look... Oh, Frankie, you, you look almost alive again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, I believe we're Slides teaching something about part. saving cats. Yes, I heard they, they have this new uh, sort of literary device that they well, use. Well, it sounds cats. like it's against animal cruelty, which means it'll probably keep you from ending up in hell. <laughs> 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 yes. Step up a lip, step okay. up a lip. We can earn our spots here, you know. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, let me just, let me just, um... Good, good. So, uh, I can't quite... Blink once if you're listening, blink twice if you're not, and snore very loudly if you're very much not listening, just so we know how many of you... If you snore, I'll send the hounds. I haven't had a dog in years. See, I was hoping that it would be poisoned, you're already dead, we would go back to heaven and... I don't Find think that's the way that works! Okay, so this is just kind of a black box. You have to hit the button, dear. What button? Ah, there we go. Ah, okay, and here's our lesson plan. So, um... We have she was always slow on the uptake. I will write a very mean story about you. Not if I write one first. I mean, we'll be writing at the same time. So, Save the Cat. Um, Save the Cat is described as a 15-beat story beat breakdown of any story. Any uh, good meal shouldn't be more than four beats. Well, that's true. Anyway, um, and we thought that the best way to learn is by doing it for you and then hopefully you understand what we did. Also because you're not very reactive, so... Though I will say, seeing as we are literary criminals, we always like to experiment a bit. Yes, yes. So we will be doing Swap the Cat. Swap the Cat. Don't tell it's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we will be uh, going beat by beat. Um, and light, dear. Oh the, my light! The fires of hell. You can't uh, be blocking them. Yes, I'm gonna get chilly. I exactly. Don't get chilly. Um, <clears throat> we will be going beat by beat, and we'll be swapping our story after each beat. Yes. So, Wait, I thought we were going beat by beat, picking a winner and continuing. That's the other one. That's the other one! Oh no! Yes, you're right. We have a few very interesting lessons planned, and we named them all very similar. So similar that we can hardly remember which one's which. 
My brain's not in here anymore. Death. <laughs> <laughs> the 15 beats. Number one. Oh, no, 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 okay, wait, we need to pick a genre first. So we have picked one of the ten genres. Apparently, they're a little different than I remember them. And in all likelihood, this whole month we'll be teaching about that one particular genre and the nuances of it oh, through yes. experimentation. Experimentation. Uh, it is called Monster in the House. What? What? what, what? Monster? Oh, yes. Are we talking about Frankenstein or, or Dracula or those are really the only two monsters? I what about Master Jackal and Mr. Hyde? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Maybe we'll make up our own monster. Ooh! Ooh! What about some kind of, oh, swamp thing? Ooh! I I'll make mine sparkle. Ooh! We will be giving each other a monster that is supernatural in its powers. Even if its strength derives from insanity. No, 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 we're not going to do that. We're not going to be ableist. <laughs> Watch my other videos! <laughs> <laughs> it seems you were possessed by an angel there briefly. I know! What a sweet angel. And A monster that is supernatural in its powers and evil at its core. Oh, evil. Like us. <laughs> Two, a house, meaning an enclosed space that can include a family unit, an entire town, or even the world! How's that a house? Ah, well, it's, it's okay. They're a little bit more free in their interpretations of things. Ghastly! That's why they're saying a cat and not the rider. You're right. And number three, a sin. Someone is guilty of bringing the monster oh. in the house. A transgression oh. that can include ignorance. Ignorance. The worst transgression. <sighs> yes, it truly is. Believe us. God forbid if they were ever to elect an ignoramus president. Bounce, 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 bounce. So now that we have your attention again, seeing as we are all modern. Modern. Modern, yes. What what? What what? Uh, Raise we the will... roof. We will now be taking a minute, a minute, a minute to give each other a. Oh wait, so which game are we doing? We're, we're doing the. One... No, we're doing the uh, swap the cat. Swap, where swap, we swap, 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 swap. Yes. Um, well, we'll be giving a minute to come up with a monster, a house, and a sin to give to the other person. Yes. And a one, and, and a, a two, two, and, and a, a one, one, two, two three. three! Perfectly insane. Just like the... Boy man. Riding! <laughs> Oh, you're not going humorous, are you? No, I'm having trouble thinking, my dear. I was always a bit more of the contemporary literature. I can see you can't download updates. I don't know what those are. Go on, harlots! I cannot download you! A bit of a confession. I am what they call a pencer. Well, you just made me come up with something horrifying. A pencil? No, but you'll find out in just a moment. <laughs> I Done. I have finished first, which means that I will go to heaven first. Yeah, do you remember what you were in hell for? No. Huh? I don't know that. <laughs> I figured this would be the good time for very uplifting stories. Ah, right? yes, very so. much so. All Hallows Eve. Very fun. Hopeful. 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 What is your my monster, monster, dear? My monster is the Polterjaw. A poltergeist that possesses people by unlocking their jaw and making them devour whatever living thing is near. That's delightful. 
Well, my monster is the dead pedermis. Living skin that possesses people. So we both have body parts that possess people? Yes. That's terrifying. Yours is too. Thank you. Think about you. it, it Thank rips you. off of people like... Oh. <laughs> yes, that's not exactly my favourite kind of hug. No. It's a little too snuggly. Flesh bondage. I forgot, you're all graduate students, correct? Way, 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 over, way over 20? Good. I would hope so, they're having hell residents teach them. Good point, yes. Yes. Um, a house. Yes. A collapsed coal mine. You're fucking kidding me. No. The subway. It gets worse, people. <laughs> it gets worse. Sin. Capitalist disregard for safety. Capitalist greed. <laughs> Hell. See, it seems like we both just found that capitalism is bad. <laughs> it was quite a news in hell. Who knew? One visit upstairs to, you know, your land, and apparently we already know capitalism's bad. Yes. Who knew? Someone better tell Aristotle. This game is very fun because swapping won't make much of a difference when you're writing the same <laughs> It'll be stuff. very nuanced. They should have sent people who committed different literary crimes. What can you do? Oh, well. <clears throat> good, good. So, have you all done the same thing? Uh, found yourself a dead person and made sure that their answers are the same as yours? Good, good. Well, then, now is a wonderful time to take a sip of tea. Oh! Think about your own sins and continue to the first beat. What's our first beat again, dear? It's like in a teacup. Wait. Dead. <clears throat> I have a timer set for us, you know, the two minute rule. Oh no, what will I? Oh, okay. For the beats. Right, yes, no. Time exists. You would forget that, it doesn't exist in here, lives oh. go on forever. Yes. We just don't use periods, or commas, exclamation marks. The only exclamation mark we're allowed to use is the semicolon. Because it continues. Though I've seen a number of people use M dashes. I think that's mostly to torture others. Oh. M dashes are a heavenly good of angels that shall never be touched in hell. Only if you use them right. Oh yes, right. The people here in hell only use hyphens. <laughs> they claim to be ambitious. I saw an underscore once. Oh no! Really? Yes. And you're still here? Yes. Oh. Called the Undertaker. We're using the academic help of a blog. I don't know if it's... Blog! Mixed blog, mixed blog, Mrs. Blog, um... Blog. I think it's Mr. Studio Binder. Oh yes, correct. Um, well, and uh, we will leave a Lincodium for you to read up on it yourselves. Yes. So, the first beat. Are you tired, Devin? Do you want to go back to your sarcophagus? <laughs> you mean my sarcophagus? That's cultural appropriation, dear. I have a bed. Sarcophagus. <laughs> sarcophagus. <laughs> <laughs> Have you written it all down? Chakra Blue. The opening image. <laughs> Start strong with an image that catapults your audience into looking and feel to the look and feel of your story. Yes. Blake Snyder suggests knocking no. this out on page one. We don't. We, yeah. Yeah. We don't need any of the rest of this. So just a strong opening image, oh, right. like our beautiful facades. Yes. Yes, let's go. Starting. Go. Starting. Wait, we're writing a story, not a screenplay, correct? I have no clue, I'm just writing it as if it's a synopsis. Of what though? Of a story or a screenplay? A story. Okay. I feel like I'm writing a screenplay right now. Me too. <laughs> Time! 
You're cheating. <laughs> yes, I'm in literary hell. What are you expecting? I just had to finish the um the <clears throat> sentence. The sentence. Yes, I think we should do that. Uh, children, students, if you're writing, it is usually good to finish a sentence. Indeed. Yes. Yes. Mm. All right. Like to start with you, I will finish? start. Okay. <clears throat> start. All right. Cheese. <laughs> We open on the subway train in the middle of the night. A homeless person is sleeping on the bench and a businesswoman on the phone nearby. We hear a sucking noise as the skin pulls off the man. The woman makes a point of not looking as it closes in, trying to ignore whatever the man is doing. The last image is the skin wrapping her up and devouring her in a bloody affair. Then the same businesswoman stands up and makes a business sounding call. What? Possessed. Oh. Go ahead. Hmm. So you are writing a screenplay. <laughs> I suppose I am. It's very good, very good. So have you all taken- Start! The chewing noise echoes through the coal mine. Calvin's eyes move from his split fingers clutching the pickle. I'm not sure how this thing- The pickaxe. The pickaxe. Over his shoulder to Rodney, chewing his gum as if he was watching a soccer game under the warm spring sunbeams. It'd be uplifting if a stupid job wouldn't click you with each shoe. Hmm. 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 I, I see. So this actually demonstrates perfectly, my dear students, that you can either go specifically with a shocker, or you can slowly establish the creepy atmosphere. Both equally uh, good choices. Let's see what happens when we swap. Yes. I now have the small device. There we go. All right, dear students. I got this. Oh, uh -huh. oh, you now teaching, huh? Huh? Want to see the angels first? I was thinking we'd go at the same time, but whatever. Oh, yeah. I don't care. Go off, I suppose. We're gonna go at the same time. Good. Let's come at the same time. Step two. Theme stated. Film structure requires that the theme of the film is communicated by someone fairly early on. Ah. Calmly, this is dialogue spoken to the protagonist that he doesn't quite grasp yet. Mm. So we need to have a theme now. See, as a <laughs> pencil, I don't quite understand how one knows the theme beforehand, but I suppose the 21st century is different. We're playing a game here. Oh, yes. You should just play along, you know. You play. All right. Are you on the oh, uh, yes, I'm using this now. And you have to start the time for us, dear. Oh yes. The theme starts now. Oh I completely forgot I'm writing your story. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> oh goodness. I can't do it this quickly! We'll add an extra minute next time. Just stop the timer. Because I had eight seconds and I didn't even remember the, the word neighborhood anymore. Oh dear. No timer. Where is it? Do you serve tea? No. Oh god. I know. Putting up with this hell without tea. Yes. Get about it. At least they have nice, unsweetened, unmilked black tea here in hell. It's rather good. Yes, yes, yes. All right, all right. So the theme that we definitely always know beforehand. Yes. I, I was very confused when we started this because I was like, okay, I'm in the coal mine, what can I use? And I almost started writing until I remembered that we're playing a game. <laughs> oh, I'll start. Oh, well, I'm supposed to start this time, right? Well, then begin. Okay. We hear a concerned voice coming from the phone asking if Susan, the businesswoman, is all right. She grins widely, looks at the looks the homeless man up and down, and responds that she's just finished up her report. The neighborhood development was a huge success, and no homeless people were left. 
She hangs up, snarls, get out, and heads for the exit. Oh, interesting the way you took it. I had assumed that the homeless person was dead. Hey, <laughs> well, now he's not. <laughs> of course. See, I, I thought so at first, but then, you know, the woman was still alive, despite the... I was figuring body snatchers. Ah, see, I thought that the skin leaves a piece of itself in each person. Well, that's delightful. Mm. Hey, that's why we're swapping to find things others did not. The devil's skin is always multiplying like all cells are. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> they are still mining and have gotten very deep when Rodney notices... <laughs> Put your head out of the... Bur out of the um, sulfur. Out of the what? Out of the sulfur. Ah, yes. They are still mining and have gotten very deep when Rodney notices an old collapsed wing of the mine. He turns to Calvin, looking dour. Calvin brings up the death of the ten men and that were buried alive there. Rodney reflects for a moment and says, It's the bosses ignoring regulations. That shit will chew us up and it doesn't spit you out. Ah. Uh, it's still the same story. <laughs> and swap. Swap. It truly is the it same story, is isn't the same it? same story, especially because we have the same theme. See, that's why theme is so important here, students. It completely um, varies the story. Otherwise, you end up saving the cat the exact same way. Ha ha. Ha Now we're going to the setup. Ooh, who are we Ooh. setting them up with? Calvin with Susan or Rodney with chewing gum? You always were a trollop, weren't you? And a very proud one. Use your first ten pages wisely. Use your first ten pages wisely. You can draw on them. Wait. You can write little penises on them. <laughs> Wait. Did we not already use the first ten pages with these two? No, 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 no. Because we're talking screenplay, and that should neither one of those should be more than like a paragraph. Here, you'll me to this very natural bar that's getting in my way. Um. Here you'll need to establish your story's scope with the look and feel for the audience. Feels good. First show your character in their old world. Oh shit, we screwed up already. These aren't our main characters, supposedly. They're not? I guess not. I guess in that story we can still pull it off. You can still put off in this story as well. But I named mine! <laughs> Let the audience know what the status quo is for them, then hint at the adventure that follows. To be fair, we haven't seen the monster in that setup yet. Chewing gum. Second, establish- Chewing gum is not the monster! Second, establish all characters who will factor into your main story beats. This may take some creativity. This may take some creativity. Dear, I don't think we'll ever get out of hell if we're mocking it. <laughs> this? <laughs> Sometimes, for story reasons, you will just have to hint at those characters. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> Dear, I don't think we'll ever get out of hell if we're mocking it. The setup is one of the most important sections of your script because it provides the essential context needed for the audience to become either immediately engaged or lose interest within the first 10 minutes. We don't want them to lose interest! Don't lose interest in us. Please? Please. 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 We really would like to get out of purgatory. So purgatory, okay. dear. Purgatory. Pur Pur purgatory. <laughs> purgatory, you know. You purgatory. You get tired of porgies at some Purgatory. Point. What's a porgy? <laughs> Are you trying to say a corgi? Are we in corgatory? <laughs> Aren't porgies dogs? Corgi. I'm looking it up, I think porgies are dogs. It's a fish and it looks like a fish. Purgatory. Purgatory. <laughs> bloop bloop. What are we talking about? It's a setup there. We need to introduce the characters in the old world. Right. Um. We didn't get distracted by needing to re re retime our timing time time memory card. Time. What's a memory card? It's the memories that we are carded in our discarded in our. Okay. Um, the setup is the most important setup. <laughs> no. 
time. The setup is the most important section of your don't eat me of your script because it provides the essential well, context never. needed for the audience to become either immediately engaged or lose interest within the first 10 minutes. Obviously, as a screenwriter, the former is required to sustain a career. Yes, uh, keep that audience. Yes. Either with good writing or um, poison. Poison. So, right, so we need to establish the char main character in their. The characters in the old world. The characters in the old world, the look and feel, and hint at all important characters, which is so easy to do as in a challenge like this. Yes. Yes. Okay. You can't spend 20 minutes on it. Mm. Mm. Fine. Fine. I'm quick. I can I can be very concise. Let's try to keep it around five. Okay. <laughs> I will sabotage you too! Sabotage. How is that sabotage? Sabotage! <laughs> Look, I wrote an RFG and you have to keep it! Ah. Ah. Halloween, people! Halloween, bitches! And bros. And those. Bitches and bros and those. Bitches and bros and those. <laughs> This is serious <laughs> art here, serious art class. Yes. Go. I'm so confused, I thought this was a subway story. Why did I suggest this show? <laughs> <laughs> this is why I suggested spin the cat. I know, it's so confusing. I'm like, oh no, let me climb back into your mind. Wait, no, this is my mind. And my mind, it's both yeah. our minds. Back into my brain. Fuck, I don't know what to do with this subway story anymore. <laughs> right. I'm really happy with how this is going, but I've also just forgotten all words and can only see the images of it. <laughs> I need a translator from dead to living. Done. Almost. Give me a moment, dear. Take as long as you need, dear. When the dark comes smashing through, we'll carry you. You will be found. You lost. You are found. You're found. Found you. I'm the bad guy. Shush! I can't concentrate. Duh. <laughs> I am pretty sure, so dear writers, <clears throat> you can either write a proper setup with an old world and introducing characters, or you can just write the hook, which will probably be the next beat and will fuck over your writing partner if you've already written it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so that can't be the catalyst then, I will figure it out. <laughs> I'm just trying to give you a challenge because I believe so much in your literary talent. I set you up perfectly. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Oh, wait, wait we have to read first. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> Jill is walking through New York. She is a street artist with a Patreon. She tags an anti-capitalist message on the intro to the subway she, as she descends, takes a pic and posts it to her Instagram for her followers. New York is grind, grit, grungy and gritty but alive with protest. She is taking the subway to a one at the moment. When she gets there, she meets with her non-binary partner, Solitaire, and tells them about her latest post. After the protest, they take the subway again to get back to their warehouse apartment they share with five other queer neurodivergent people. Uh, no, queer neurodivergent 20-somethings. Mark and his boyfriend, John. Brenda, Erica, and Jacqueline the polythreple. 
No, not Jacqueline. Yeah, Jacqueline. Marbles. <laughs> I give you all my marbles. Why? Because you did. So this is the example of a really good setup. This was brilliant. You followed the concept again. You somehow managed to bring it, make it. How did you do this? This is very good. This is very good, people. This is very good. It's very very good. I'm sorry. I'm good at synopsis. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is a, there's a bunch of like interesting characters in there! It's, oh my goodness. Oh no, oh no, don't read it yet. Don't Wait, read you it. have to read it, dear! Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so good! <clears throat> Just keep chewing, Calvin tells Rodney and turns back to the coal in front of him. Each prick is another... Prick, prick. No. <laughs> Pick, theoretically. Pick, not prick. But I would say each swing. Each swing. See, um, in the old times everyone spoke German, so, you know, I sometimes forget my English. I forgot my German. <laughs> yes! Each swing is another day closer to Lillian's college degree. His little girl will do what he had, what he never had the chance to, get out of this forsaken town and study summer of the library that didn't also have to function as a shelter. He barely made any progress when he gets interrupted once more, from his pocket this time. The radio in his belt starts buzzing. Rodney, can you get that? But the lazy buff was taking his third break already. Calvin puts down the pickaxe and answers. It's the voice of a little girl, his little girl. Daddy? Daddy, something really bad's going on. Lillian, what are you doing at the mine? See, and this is how you not write a setup because it's um, it, it is also called a inciting incident or a catalyst, which is the fourth step of the beat sheet that we're currently teaching. I'll fix it. It's not bad. I do think the story of it is not bad. It's just not what we're. It's not bad, right? No, it's not bad at all. It's not what we're doing. <clears throat> so, as we can see from this little demonstration, I am what they call a medium res pencil. You've said that before. Is that an excuse? No, it's 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 a. Uh, she means I'm better. She, so long, she, hell. I I I. It's just it's just a um very strong worded. Uh, feedback comment I will send to the devil on assigning me to this specific class seeing as it's not actually my but but all of you are of course way less well versed in this than I am so I am still a brilliant teacher Numero four Catalyst The Catalyst ah. Sometimes called the inciting incident Ooh. The Catalyst is the event that disrupts your protagonist's status quo See, Calvin is just very troubled and this is just his everyday life, you know Hold out your hand Ah. No! Bop. Ah. Bop. But they're not ready to make a choice that catapults them into the story just yet. That's it. That's the whole description. <laughs> so wait, this new Fuck the cat! <laughs> this whole literary device is just hold it, hold it, hold it! It's literary chastity. I'm it not is. into it. <laughs> Side note real quick from Leah Falls here, the host of Story Manifestors. If you like using Save the Cat, we are not judging you and it works wonderfully for a lot of people. Um, I came into this knowing that I'm a pantser with a very different style than this, so it's, it's, it's sort of a... We're all just here to have a good fun time. Yes, exactly. And we're not making fun of you if you enjoy it, we're not judging or anything. We have good friends that also like Save the Cat and have written very good books off of it. I know plenty of people have written good things off of it. Okay, that's enough explanation you get at the time it just went off, so like... Back to the story! I did it correctly after all! Oh. I saved the cat! I saved the cat! Yeah, there's no cats allowed in hell. I'm They're sorry. all angels. Of course. I kidnapped an angel. 
I kidnapped an angel! I disposed of an angel. Oh god. I, Inciting incident! Before we go into this, I want to give you another very important lesson, dear students. Um, generally speaking, it's very good to learn about the beats. All of the beats before you do this, so that you know which one comes next and don't accidentally do that one first. In general, it's probably good to read the material before you try its techniques. But, you know... Remember, the devil may know. follow the example of Professor Perfection, not Professor Poof. Hosea, please. Poof, poof, poof. Dear God, I'm alone. Have I always been alone? Is this hell? Is hell loneliness? Or is hell myself? Being stuck alone forever, all by myself, only myself to judge and guide me. And I will never know whether I am truly correct, truly seen, truly observed, truly known. For it is only me and you, dark, chasming void. I look at you and you see me, but I can't see you seeing me, so it's like... No, I'm back, back! Oh, good. Did you miss me? No. Oh, no, of course not. <gasps> of course not. Now, dear students, let's learn about the inciting... Oh, we did that. We already did that, dear. Oh, uh, yes. God, you're worthless. I wish you weren't here. <laughs> The void, yawning, the yawning void, the chasm between worlds, the space between atoms. Let's go! Yes! I'm so confused that it's a subway story again! <laughs> <laughs> Why did I come up with this idea? I miss a vital thing from the third step. Creativity. I've got like all these great characters I'm trying to establish and get into all of them and I'm like, no, just insight. Insight! Insight! Done. I'm getting there. I know you are. Just take much longer. It's all right. We can't all be literary professors in hell. Just you and me? Yes. None of you. No. Because of that tip, you'll make it to heaven. Oh, yes. Unless we drag you screaming, screaming into the pit. Down with us, down to Hades, the underworld, the place where all sinners belong. Once my claws have gotten into your literary mind. Way down under the ground. You've undermined me again. That's my job. You're and you've distracted puff. me again. <laughs> Don't puff me again. You're gonna get lonely. Never get lonely. I'm not puffing you as a favour to you. Ah, yes. This is a very long sentence. Oh god, this is one sentence so far. How many words is this? Apparently my solution to making like, it just be an exciting incident is... Write a very long <laughs> sentence. It's 59 words. I'm consistent. My word count for an exciting incident was also 115 words. Wow. Good job. Okay, wait, I'm working on this. There's nothing exciting about this yet. Stop! Oh, I forgot Brenda exists. You don't necessarily have to involve all of them. Do you mean expression? Don't you eat already? <laughs> yes, I do. But shut up! You can't watch a genius while working! I watch myself. How? Okay, okay, I'm gonna check my word count now to see if I'm really that much longer or if I'm just way slower. 141, okay, it's a little longer. Only a little. Am I starting this time or are you? I think I'm starting. I think so too. Mm, the subway story. 
which does not take place in the subway anymore. I guess we'll circle back to that. Yeah. Is that my to eat? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Let me spill the tea. You can pour the tea. <laughs> no, let me spill the tea. Isn't that an expression the young folks use? Possibly. Possibly. Do you people spill the tea? Or do you tea the spill? The night unfolds like any other. John cooks a strange carp balooza of biscuits, spaghetti and pad thai for the lot. Mm. Erica works late, her head stuck in policies that may one day create a juster world. Jacqueline beats Mark at chess for the 18th time that week and Solitaire practices their inking skills with a new tat on Jill's wrist. John has just sat down to eat as well when Erica slams her laptop down and snarls, get out. Jacqueline and Brenda laugh. John asks if his cooking is that bad tonight, but Erica's expression stays icy. Get out. You don't have the permits to occupy these buildings. I just messaged my boss. The police is on their way. The laughter dies down. Jacqueline clears her throat. Boo, you kidding, right? I mean, the sound of sirens cuts her off. Damn, this is very good. Thank you, thank you. I think you. they're probably going to flee into the uh, subways or something like that. Ah, is it inciting enough? Is it catalyzing you? Titilizing your inci incidents? Huh, <laughs> tit. Ah, yes. Calvin. Calvin gets to the top of the mine to find his daughter's daughter. She is crying and holding her broken teddy bear. Calvin gives her a hug. Aw, oh, don't worry. Don't worry, I'll fix Barry at home. Want to come down in? Want to come down in with me? And want to come down in? Me and Uncle Rodney found some fool's gold. She nods and they descend into the mine. When they reach Rodney, he sounds like he's still chewing. He turns around to reveal that he isn't. They look back up the shaft and a man is chewing on a stick of dynamite. And he, and a man enters who's chewing on a stick of dynamite. His terrified wide eyes look at the three of them when his mouth cracks open and he swallows the stick. He explodes, collapsing the mine, trapping the three. Oh gosh! Oh, I like that you just took the daughter, made like, qu quickly extinguished the fire that I, like... I made it a red day. herring! Yes, and then... Oh! Oh goodness, now it's like Lazy Rodney, Kelvin and his little daughter. Yes, Uncle Rodney. Uncle Rodney. Oh! Uncle Oh! Yes. So they're like brothers Want to come down uncle. in? Me and Uncle Rodney found some fools. Ah, I gold. thought that was like a metaphorical uncle. It might be, but it still means he's considered an uncle oh, in the family. That's good. That's good. As is yours. Alright. Now we have one more to do in this. Yes, yes. Pass out of hell. Lesson. And it is. Debate. A step which to anyone familiar with the method and plodding makes complete sense and to me yeah it definitely is the natural follow-up to what we just wrote is the debate this is where the f you okay they hurt oh i'll cream them later yes in hell <laughs> in hell this is where the protagonist has doubts about setting out on a per per perilous journey i'm having doubts about this too that's it Ah! Yes! Of course! I mean, I'm, I, I'm sure Calvin is doubting... things. Okay. I have no clue how to inject doubts into this. We're kind of in like a fucking go moment. <laughs> See, that's the thing! I just write go, 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 go! Step my, step my literary sin. Step why I'm in hell. I will just spell check your stuff so I don't have to think about this. <laughs> Oh, look! Success! Slain. A mining hallway is called a shaft, right? Yes. Good. Let's go deep into the shaft. Did you read yours? What, what do you mean? This one, did you? Yes, you did. A moment of 
doubt you say. Excuse me, did I hear? Explain the whole backstory. I feel like I'm using a different beat of like the character thought backstory or something and bring it in here. You are. I'm sure that's gonna. Oh no, I have. Oh no. Doubt! I'm doubting my decisions here! I'm doubting my storytelling! Which you should never do, my dear uh, students. I'm looking up the beat sheet right now to see what she's actually writing. Yeah, that's no, because I'm done! <laughs> Let's see here, 15 beats. I feel like that might be part of Dark Knight of the Soul, but I can't Oh, say. no, 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 that's later. No, it's the next step. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Dark Knight of the Soul is supposed to be like between the mid max and the climax. No, it's breaking. That one dark. You okay. don't tell me about it. <laughs> and this is the part where you get strangely dark because a character just doubting what they're doing isn't enough to get you into hell. Dark in different ways, I suppose. <clears throat> Fuck all that! Solitaire yells and grabs their go bag. Jill runs over to Solitaire and starts to argue about leaving while Baxter, their dog, is still at the groomer. Oh no! As they argue, Not Baxter! As they argue, Brenda grabs Jacqueline, shaking her. Why would you do this, Jacqueline? You're kidding, right? Jacqueline's skin begins ripping free and wrapping around Brenda's arms. Mark is sobbing and vomits while he watches. John pulls a pistol and baseball bat from under the counter. He fires around into Jacqueline. Everyone screams! Instead of a skull shattering, the head splits open and grinding teeth are inside. We see the real Jacqueline screaming in torturous pain inside the creature. Jill just barely drags Erica away from Brenda as they disappear down a hatch leading into the subway. Wow! That's great, but it's Erica, not Jacqueline, that's possessed. No. Yeah. No. Wait a minute. See, Erica's the one in the fall of All right. But that's really, really good. I'll, I'll, I'll swap those it's later terrible. if we ever actually write the story. This is hilarious because, like, you now actually progress the story, and I'm like, all right, I can slow down. <laughs> I can slow down and do more setup. I'm afraid. Dr. Laverne Poof was so bad at teaching Save the Cat, she was turned into a cat. Well. I grew tired of this game. Return to me, Laverne! The debate! Debate. Debate. Debate! Lillian starts crying immediately. Rodney lifts her up and yells at Calvin to run, eager to find the illusion of safety in these dark, twisted shafts. Amazing. Thank you, thank you. Such a debate! <laughs> Calvin is frozen, staring after Rodney. The image fades into a flashback, an old argument Calvin hates thinking back on. What do you mean you convinced her to keep it? My sister's got a scholarship. Do you even know how to care for a child? He said he did. He didn't. He said their precious Annabelle would be okay. She wasn't. She wanted to start a family. Sure, not yet, not before finishing law school, but at some point, her brother was just overprotective. It was sudden that she had a few lucid moments between Lillian's birth and her death. Enough to tell Rodney and him to get the fuck over their fight and care for the baby together. With everything Calvin had fucked up, he was at least certain he would be a good dad, a great dad, a dad that wouldn't bring his daughter into a dangerous mine. Rodney's call snapped him back into the present. Calvin, get moving! Oh dear! Yeah, so, um, how you have a good debate is you, um, put everyone in an immediate, urgent situation where they can't really think things through, uh, then throw in some flashback, uh, add in the whole backstory, and, um, yeah, you're good. That, or you have somebody shoot somebody. Yes, that's, that's a good debate. Good. Yes, good debates. <laughs> Do not try this at home, kids. No, 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 no. So, anyway, um, that's the first five beats. Yes. Um, we'll be learning the next five beats next week with us. Indeed. With us? With us again? I'm afraid so. 
So saith the devil. We have to look at them one more week? I suppose we do. As long as we get those damn halos from them. Otherwise I will rip it off of one of their heads. Wait, are we teaching angels? Lazy yeah, bastards. Yeah, but I mean like, we can murder them first and then rip away their halo. Hmm, that'll do. Sounds like an inciting incident. Oh yes. Let's not debate. We're getting good at this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week for the you setup. Didn't, you didn't hear that. <laughs> uh, What's the next one? Break, break into, into two. two. Oh, like this. This is going to break ah, into two photos. <laughs> perfect. All right. See you next week. See children. you then. Bye. Bye. Are they still here? I think you need to tell them good night. Okay. Hey. So. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, story manifestors, for engaging with this infernal punishment. If you enjoyed these suffering souls, leave a like or comment. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this for the month of October. And as we said, advice in all things storytelling for the rest of the year. Ring the bell! And for all links to Story Manifesto's social media, look down below in the description. Happy Halloween!